do it if it's even a real gun. Go on. Do it! Come on! Fucking do it if you've got the balls! Can't do it, huh? That what the girls say about you too? Little bitch like you ought to know better. Now, you're dead! <laughs> Do it if you're gonna! Welcome to Games Worth Your Time. This is a series I was thinking about for a while. Um, these, these are gonna be games that I think are absolutely essential. There's no common ground between titles in this list aside from just absolutely being worth your limited time. The first one in the series is Yakuza Like a Dragon. Let me explain. I had zero experience with the Yakuza series prior to Like a Dragon. No background on the existing lore, gameplay, etc. I read basically nothing on Like a Dragon before I played it. Which is kind of fun to go into a game and know nothing about it. It, it feels like a very fresh experience and I feel like sometimes when you play a game after reading tons of reviews on it, you kind of taint yourself with what critics think or what other people think, and so I, I, I like to go into games like this with very little information. So how did I even get into it, right? How did I get into Yakuza Like a Dragon? Well, I'm a huge turn-based RPG fan. Two of my favorite games of all time are The Legend of Dragoon on PS1 and Lost Odyssey on Xbox 360. I've, I've beaten Legend of Dragoon at least five or six times, Lost Odyssey probably four or five times. Um, I really like the former for its story, world, and the interactive combat specifically, and the latter mainly for the story and combat. Um, these games really set my bar for RPG combat and stories uncomfortably high. They're just both fantastic games. Um, I decided after picking up an Xbox Series X, I got lucky that I found one in stock, uh, that Yakuza Like a Dragon would be my first quote unquote true next gen game on the Series X. It really caught my attention for being a turn based RPG. I saw clips that kind of showed the combat being interactive, like Legend of Dragoon, um, and the idea of a story revolving around Yakuza just sounded pretty cool. Turn-based RPGs are rare anymore, new ones, and good turn-based RPGs even more rare. So I can comfortably say, 70 hours later, my mind was completely blown by this game. It's incredible. Combat, the job system, the world, the storyline, side quests, the humor, Emotion, I could go on. I mean, this game is absolutely a 10 out of a 10 and very much worth your time. Let's get into the story. Yakuza Like a Dragon story is up there with the best. I mean, there's no other way to put it. It hits so many incredible story notes. There's drama, there's emotion, there's strong characters, great world building, tons of relevant and fun content, and plenty of comedy. The comedy really caught me off guard. I, I didn't really know what to expect, but throughout the entire game, there is just a series of hilarious events that just make it so much fun to play through and just, just experience. So many moments stuck with me from this game. It's hard to tack down even a few for a video. The backstories of basically every single character are so well written that any quest or event that impacted any of the characters in the game was very meaningful to me. And you think you can pull the senpai card on me? Talk is cheap. The Yakuza way to lead is with bloodshed. The weak always fall in line behind the strong. Help me! Time to accept it. Among the men in this room, you represent the weak, and that goes for all of you. I wasn't looking uh, to dive into a huge RPG when I started Like a Dragon. 
I mean, I don't even have that much free time anymore between work, family, and friends. But this story pulled me in to the degree that I spent most of my free time coming back for more of the story. I'd play on my Xbox. I'd stream it to my tablet. You know, I, I would do anything I could to find time and find a way to play this game. I wanted to know how Kasuga's story played out specifically. He's such a great character with just a, a huge story around him. I wanted to know what became of the Arakawa family uh, and how the Yakuza gangs would end up. Um, I wanted to know how the stories of everyone, everyone in my party resolved themselves. Playing this game was like reading a page turner of a book. If you've ever read a book that you just couldn't put down, that's what this game felt like. I just could not bring myself to put down the controller, thanks to the tremendously good writing and voice acting. The TLDR version of the story is that you're playing as Ichiban Kasuga, the son of a brothel worker who, through some really crazy storytelling, becomes a part of the Arakawa Yakuza family. I won't give away too much of the story to avoid spoilers, but the story follows Kasuga through several cities with a bunch of ups and downs with the Arakawa family, other Yakuza gangs, uh, and revolves around his, his quest to help people in Ijincho. Um, it's just a really heartwarming, um, well fleshed out story. I need to have some fucking words. Here's some shit he needs to answer for. Who the hell? Fuck. Let's talk about the characters in this game for a minute. They're just simply unforgettable. Ichiban Kasuga is going to go down as one of my all time favorite characters of any game. I've been playing games for 30 years and he's, he's absolutely at the top of the list. He's honorable almost to a fault and just completely lovable. His hair is hilarious. Love it. Once you get past the intro uh, and he gets his uh, hair blown out, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. This may not be what you want to hear. But, you know, I consider you my brother, man. That means something to me. Don't make me watch my brother die. Yo, Adachi-san. Your party all have their own personalities, and they're very well fleshed out. Even the enemies and NPCs you run into as a part of the side quests and boss fights are just fantastic. Anything gone down yet with that legend malt? Well... I've been watching the counter like a hawk, but the bartender wasn't kidding when he said nobody comes here. Yeah, he did say this was more of a hobby for him. That's exactly it. The only people coming in are our friends like Adachi and Sachan, which means that legend malt is probably just going to sit behind the counter for the rest of our lives. Make it out alive. Enemy and boss fights have great cutscenes preceding them. The introductions of important characters have like a very 1970s Shaw Brothers like kung fu movie vibe to them, which is just it, it adds another element of uniqueness to to this game that you just don't see in anything else. The job system in Yakuza. Um, it's pretty much standard fare in regards to changing classes if you've played any other type of similar game, Final Fantasy for example. Um, although in Yakuza Like a Dragon you go to a literal jobs office in Ijin Cho and speak with an employee to change the job and combat outfit of your characters, which is a nice touch. Male and female characters have different jobs available to them based on their role in the story and their attributes. Um, which is pretty unique. So you can't completely mix and match every class with every person. Um, like a dragon, uh, it mixes things up in the class department. Instead of your typical like white mage, black mage, fighter, etc., uh, you have jobs like idol, which is the healer. You have jobs like the foreman, which is kind of like a tank, or breaker, which is literally a breakdancing DPS, which is hilarious. 
Um, each class offers unique permanent stat boosts once you level the job up, along with a set of increasingly strong moves tied to the job. For instance, Namba's homeless guy job, which is hilarious on its own, um, has a skill called Pigeon Raid, where you spread seeds onto enemies who are then mobbed by a flock of pigeons. It's great. Um, leveling up the homeless guy job leads to an improved version called Pigeon Storm uh, of the Pigeon Raid ability that does increased damage to all abilities. So this translates to pretty much all classes. You have kind of stepping stones of stats and, and class attacks um, that you unlock as you level it up. You can go from level one to level 99 of any job. Each class has a very powerful attack called Essences. Uh, these moves trigger a special cutscene and are especially strong attacks. The Gangster class has a particularly hilarious skill called Essence of Ladder Acrobat Acrobatics that literally has a gangster whip out a long straight ladder. The gangster then proceeds to beat the shit out of everyone with this ladder in a cutscene. And it's just awesome. On to the world. Uh, the story has three main locations. You have Kamurocho, Sotenbori, and Izisaki Ijincho. Most of your time is going to be spent in Ijincho, and it's just such a well-made city. The size of the world isn't massive. We're not talking Skyrim-level world. Uh, but the developers seem to have chosen quality over quantity, which I, I really respect. The explorable city is just bursting with people, situations, mini games, and side quests. You can save people from being harassed by other Yakuza. You can pick up uh, cans for recycling and turn them in for prizes. You can visit an actual Sega arcade with playable Sega arcade machines and claw machines. You can get into a batting cage or go-kart racing. Um, you can play slot machines. You can play poker. You can grind mobs in dungeons. You can make your own weapons and armor. You can fill out a Pokedex type book of enemies for rewards. You can even catch bugs in this game. There's even a business management minigame. Now, the game's optional, but I would absolutely recommend doing it. Um, it can provide you with tons of cash in the form of uh, stockholder meeting bonuses, as well as providing access to the strongest move in the game uh, once you hit the number one ranked corporation in Ijin Show. I spent a ton of hours bringing Ichiban Confections, which is the, the company that you run, um, to the top of the stock rank, and it was worth every minute I spent with it. Getting to the number one corporate rank uh, not only gets you millions of yen per shareholder meeting at the end, but will also provide you with the strongest move in the game. Uh, I mean, it's, it's crazy, just crazy how much game is packed into this playable world, especially compared to games like Skyrim. It, it was huge, yeah, but it just felt kind of dead. Like, there just wasn't much out there. Um, I beat this game in about 60 hours, and I beat the true final Millennium Tower in about 75 hours. But you could easily put in 100 plus hours if you get into all the side quests or minigames. And the colors of the world. Man, walking around a busy district at night was just amazing. Uh, the stacked neon signs, the bustle of activity, the this, this city just oozes personality. I'll take this smaller, jam-packed city over a huge, empty, repetitive, large open world 100% of the time. Give me more tangibles and less empty space, please. Time for the meat and potatoes of a turn-based RPG, the combat. Yakuza Like a Dragon is not your typical turn-based combat system. It's not just sit, attack, 
weight, magic, weight. There are dynamic elements pretty much to all of it, and they do matter. Most attacks have some type of interaction during the attack, typically a Y or X, uh, repeated press or timed press. Think like a um, quick time event to do bonus attack damage. You also have the possibility of getting what they call a perfect guard with the right button timing, which uh, negates a percentage of the attack damage to your character. This can really save your butt when done correctly, and if you're going for the true final Millennium Dungeon, you need to master this, otherwise you're just not going to survive it. Also, if you're fighting four or more enemies at once, which happens all the time, you have abilities to do uh, damage to more than one enemy all at once in one attack. Uh, this comes in handy when you're figuring out the Pokemon-esque weaknesses for enemy types. Um, if you attack someone with a baseball bat swing from Kasuga, for example, there's a proximity element to the attack. Um, if you wait too long to initiate your attack, the enemies uh, kind of wander apart. Because it's turn-based, but it's actually kind of a live system where enemies will move around the combat area. So if they move away and you have a proximity attack um, and you, you miss your opportunity to hit them when they're close together, that can actually lower the effectiveness of your attack. If you knock an enemy down and have another party member nearby while they're knocked down, uh, they'll occasionally get a free attack on them while they're on the ground. And these attacks oftentimes do a lot of damage. If you knock an enemy down and move on to another party member's action and attack quick enough, the hit to the uh, knockdown enemy while they're still down will also do additional damage. The strengths and weaknesses are very helpful, uh, especially late in the game. Um, so you have weaknesses to fire, weaknesses to uh, lightning, you know, it's, it's kind of like an elemental style weakness uh, grid. Um, you'll have boss fights and mini boss fights against bosses with just tons of HP, um, which made for great battles, just epic. Um, whittling down their health is much easier when you can exploit a weakness to fire or blades, for example. Tigers while you eat? I will ne Hey, I can get behind it. Tigers are just like house cats, but bigger. Oh, sure. It's so cute when they're about to maul you. Yeah, I'm with her on this one, Adachi-san. I don't want to end up... Well... <laughs> Come on, don't move. Last, you can call in help during a battle with an app on your phone called Poundmates, um, which is part of a hilarious quest when you unlock that. It's just great. Um, the quest that unlocks it uh, is just a hilarious misunderstanding by the characters of the name of the, uh, of the app. So this, you'll unlock this as you go through the story. You don't have to hunt it down or anything, um, but it's really cool. So the Poundmates selections are completely absurd and just amazing. For example, you can call in a crawfish, you can call in a Yakuza boss with a fetish for being treated like a baby, uh, a guy called Mr. Masochist, uh, and a kitten, for example. Um, so they all come into battle and they fight for you, they give you uh, damage mitigating options that will maybe save your butt in the tough fight, that kind of thing. Uh, and they all they all have custom, uh, like unique cutscenes that are just great. Um, they're just so well done. What's the matter? Do you want your milk or maybe your toy? Are you feeling fuzzy? So sumo John, you won't play with me? What's wrong? Are you hungry? This wouldn't be a true turn-based JRPG without Endgame, right? So this game has a New Game Plus option as well as a true final dungeon, which I already kind of talked about. Um, I beat what, what I assumed to be the final dungeon only to find out it was the next to last true dungeon. Being about level 80, um, because you have character levels and you have job class levels that go from 1 to 99, independent of one another. Um, I was pretty high up, so I figured, hey, I'll go in. You know, this is the true final Millennium Dungeon. Um, maybe I'll take a shot at it, who knows. 
I might find a really good strategy and beat, you know, beat this true final dungeon as is where I'm at without a whole bunch of grinding. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. Um, the very first normal mob one-shotted Kasuga, resulting in a game over, which was both hilarious and fr <laughs> very frustrating. Um, the true final dungeon necessitates grinding. Uh, this is where the J really comes in for JRPG. Uh, that said, there are a few tricks to power leveling to level 99 and job level 90 plus which is required to essentially to beat the true final millennium dungeon when going through the one optional uh, when going through one of the optional late game dungeons. I won't get into um, kind of how to power level yourself. There are other videos about that, but if you'd like me to make a video on it, I can do that. So just let me know in the comments. Um, long story short, I beat the true final millennium uh, tower after about 15 hours of grinding roughly. Uh, was it worth it? Hell yes. Was it difficult? Hell yes. Um, I had all of my characters at their character level 99. Uh, all of them had one job capped at level 99. And I typically had two or more additional jobs at level 50 plus uh, when I beat the true uh, final Millennium Dun uh, Tower. I loved this game so much, I couldn't not try to beat this. It, it just felt essential. Um, I, I felt like if I didn't beat this true final dungeon, that it would just nag at me in the back of my head because I wanted to beat the whole game and just enjoy the satisfaction of of the entire game. And the satisfaction of completing the true final Millennium Tower was definitely worth the effort of grinding. Uh, at the time of making this video, about 1% of Xbox gamers completed the achievement of completing the final dungeon. Uh, and the grind and difficulty spike truly made the achievement feel like an achievement or an accomplishment. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap things up on this. Um, I, I could talk all day about this game. If if I really truly gave you all the information I want to, this video would be three hours long. But all this said, this is a game that is absolutely worth your time. If if you're like me and you don't have a ton of time, uh, like I did as a kid or during college or whatever, you have finite amounts of time to spend on everything. Family, friends, work, whatever. Uh, this is definitely a game that you should work into that free time that you have. I don't care if you work 10 hours a week or 100 hours a week. You should absolutely play this game. I am not exaggerating when I say that I can't wait, cannot wait, for the next installment of the Like a Dragon franchise. This game is an absolute masterpiece. If you stuck through this video to the end, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what you thought of Yakuza Like a Dragon uh, in the comments, and if I left out any cool parts of the game. Um, if you have any experience with the other Yakuza games, I'd love to hear about it. I haven't played any of the non-turn-based combat versions, but I've heard that they're just fantastic. Um, so, again, thanks for watching. Have a good one. <laughs> Are you finally getting the picture? Like hell I am! You and me, we're like light and shadow. Born on the same day. You're the light. Harakawa's heir and legitimate son, who was always given everything I ever wanted. You had all of that from birth. What the hell happened?